they should have put their foot down at the start of the year. If they didn't do that, well then they should play for Porrick Fanning until the year is over and then do it. Like, going out and not trying, you're only fooling yourself, not your actual manager. Like, I mean, I don't get that. The GA Hour is sponsored by Paddy Power. For exclusive content from their GA ambassadors and other high-profile contributors, check out news.paddypower.com. I want to talk to you about Waterford, because obviously Waterford are one team that haven't recovered from hammering so they've taken two hammerings now in a row and a, a pretty flat performance you would say against Clare in the first round as well where a, a late rally kind of made it close but they hadn't played brilliantly right throughout the game so it looks like the players have down tools or Austin Gleeson's off at half time um, Eddie Brennan said early on the week there's a lot more to this I think than meets the eye so like I mean there's a lot of talk I've been ringing around about this and apparently like it's hard to even pin down who's at fault here because Porrick Fanning's doing his best and I don't want to be too critical of him maybe there's been a lot of criticism of him around but this is definitely not working because the players from my information didn't want Porrick Fanning the players had two or three suggestions um, that went to the county board initially one was Pat Ryan from Cork he had an interview with the county board the players had sourced him and the players there's some of them live with the Kula lads up in Dublin um, and they sourced Maddie Kenny for the county board and the county board interviewed both of them and my information is that the, that these both these interviews fell down regarding the budget for the senior hurling team so Porrick Fanning was willing to I think Maddie Kenny and Pat Ryan were asked or were told the budget and they said that wouldn't be enough and then they were told that, that they'd have to fundraise the rest themselves and they're not in a position to do that apparently Derek McGrath did an awful lot of fundraising a bit like Jim McGuinness up in Donegal that he went out and you know it's his own county and he went trying to get funds in himself so you've Pat Ryan pulling out in the last minute and you've Maddie Kenny pulling out um, as well or that, that wasn't made um, as public and then you have the players a little bit disgruntled with the county board and then Porrick Fanning comes in and then there was some issues with the Bally Gunner lads at the start and um, like I mean Peter Hogan was dropped and then asked back and I think some of the Bally Gunner lads and it just hasn't like even getting into the league final that, that was papering over a few cracks because they were um, we know the league meant nothing this year you know what I mean you look at any of the league form it didn't follow on through anyway so that was kind of neither here nor there so I think like the, the way my, here's my take on it Cheddar and I'll get yours then if the players didn't want Porrick Fanning they should have put their foot down at the start of the year if they didn't do that well then they should play for Porrick Fanning until the year is over and then do it like going out and not trying you're only fooling yourself, not your actual manager. Like, I mean, I don't get that. Or else drop off the panel. I did it Manny's a year if your heart isn't in it. Like, what? I would never go out on the field for leash and not try because I don't like the manager. Sure, that you're you're not getting back at the manager. You're not winning any battle there, are you? Um, yeah, there's a lot of points in that, Willie, and, and um, I'll, I'll deal with them, maybe not in the sequence that, that you've listed them. Um, first of all, on the, on the uh, you know, in terms of the players didn't, didn't want it, um, Look, I, look. It, media did have that uh, Pat Ryan and that Matty Kenny um, were being um, interviewed by Waterford County Board, um, and you made the point about self fundraising and that. Um, look, that's where it is. Um, let's not dodge the bullet there. For a wa- for a county um, that is not at the top, that may not be able to attract you know serious uh, um, in- investment and that into the county. Um, you know, you as a management um, have got to replace that. You know, are you going to go in and give it a half cooked shot um, in managing the team and that? No, you're not. You're going to give it everything. You manage absolutely everything because your county board may not be able to do that for you. And just simply to say no to Pat Ryan and to Matty Kenny is not an issue for Parry Fanning. It's an issue for Waterford County Board yeah. based on finance and that. Um, and I, I, I'd, I'd urge some caution about that as well. I've been on both sides of the fence. I've been in, on a, in, a, in a group uh, looking for a manager, and I was a manager. And I can tell you there's always lots of names being thrown out there. And I know myself from my former role that a n- lot of names were thrown out there that, that you know, were not in the picture at all. Um, so I think we need to be really careful about, you know, wh- what that is. We also, also, uh, your county needs to be really careful in how it chooses its, man- in its manager. You know, is this driven by three or four players? And let's just think of that for a minute. Let's say, um, let's say I'm a tall player that likes an air game. Uh, you know, I may want a certain type of a manager. 
the other three yeah. forwards or four forwards may want a completely different type of game and chose a different type of manager. So, you know, so where do you go? Um, so I think it's really, really important. And I'm, I'm not sure if this happened in Waterford. I presume it did happen in Waterford. I'm pretty sure it did. That, you know, people who, who um, you know, have expertise in knowing what's needed at county management select a manager. When you do that, you may interview 10 or 12, not two. And you may decide after this, having taken all of the evidence and all of the, the things on board, that this is the right man. You, you've got to manage a lot of things. It's not just necessarily, um, you know, the profile of the man or who wants who. You, there's a whole pile of things you need to look at here. What's the best for the team? What's the best fit for the team? What's the best fit for even the things, the periphery of the team? You mentioned finance a minute ago. That also comes into it. So it's not just necessarily just picking a, a name or something like that. Matty Kenny would have been on... I can tell you, on an awful lot of counties um, list, and rightly yeah. so, he won two club All Irelands, and you know was a coach in an All Ireland, and, and rightly so. Um, so, so you know that that these things happen the whole time, and and that happened the whole time in selection of managers. And sometimes then, when you know some things are just going through a rough period, all these things get thrown up in media and other other areas, and they're just thrown out there without any evidence to support them whatsoever. And I'll just go back to your other point. I think. Um, Woolly, there's been a lot of comments over the top, particularly by panelists and 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 by some former county managers, um, and I think I think panelists are not held accountable for what they say, but they need to be really really responsible for the comments that they make and they have a responsibility that unless you can sort of back things up with facts, you need to be careful with your choice of words. And look, I, I I'll go to another comment. I mean, I I think Dale made a comment. Um, that John Myler had lost the Cork dressing room there after the game to tip and clearly he hadn't and John Myler is a is a, 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 in a serious role with CIT coached an awful lot of those at underage level um, and so on and so on and then come out the following Sunday and gave the performance they gave now there may have been a lot of soul searching during that week but if you had lost the, the, the dressing room well you know well uh, from how, how these things work if you lose the dressing room you never get it back and you know throwing around sort of loose comments like that without substantiating it with real hard facts is not helpful and you know it, 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 it it's it's sort of incendiary comments in the dressing room because if somebody of that stature says it and you know I, I, I like all everybody else jumps on the bandwagon then you know whether they know it or whether they don't and particularly with the way social media and everything is going at the minute with, with no facts whatsoever to support them all of these things get thrown out um, so I think, you know, particularly panellists and that, um, I, I think you've got to, to, you know, have the evidence to back up. If you're making a, a, a comment like that, you've got to have some sort of evidence to back it up. Um, and I'd probably say as well, just add it to that, um, Woolly, and you're probably going to disagree with me on this. Um, there's a little bit of jockeying for sensationalism in panellists and that as well. Um, and I think particularly hurling people and particularly county managers or former county managers, we all know how this works. And I've no difficulty whatsoever in calling performance and those type of things. But, you know, so, some of the comments, um, you know, I, I'd been disappointed with what Eddie said as well, saying there's something going on that doesn't meet the eye here. Well, unless you're absolutely sure what that is, um, you know, you can't say that because maybe there isn't. And, and uh, you know, that type of stuff is undermines uh, a dressing room big time. And once it's, once it's gone, you don't get it back. Um, and I, I'd probably say a, a couple of other points on that, Wally. But there seems to be more to it than meets the eye with Waterford, though, Cheddar. Because uh, well, it, does, it does look like the players have, in some way, uh, down tools. Uh, look, look, like that's, you know, so what's your measure of that? Here's what I saw, um, and particularly against... Well, we'd ha- we have the evidence that that the players wanted other managers. We have the evidence. We have the evidence that Austin Gleeson's not try not trying. We Parik Mahan he's not trying. That they're going down badly at home. There's like there's a lot of you might call it circumstantial evidence to it's say absolutely that absolutely circumstantial. But not I, I have haven't heard a word you've said that would stand up in any court at the minute. Will you? <laughs> and, and what I would say to that is this: um, Austin Gleeson is a magnificent player. Um, and I'll just you, you use a couple of the examples you used. But most of the time I've seen Ozzy play really, really well. It was when he was coming as a loose player off of the half-back line or off of midfield into play. Um, and, you know, it may very well be that a management team in Watford may make bet different use out of Ozzy. And it takes a while to actually get that to work. And I've seen him play in the league a couple of times di- uh, this year, earlier on. And I just didn't think he was clicking and, and going well. Now, look, that could be one-to-one man management. Um, I don't know the details, um, but it 
it isn't that um, Ozzy was shooting the lights out and you know driving Watford over the line last year and suddenly now he's down tools I, I don't see that and I know Ozzy Gleeson is a club mate of Porig's as well um, so I, I just I suppose I just want to challenge the loose talk Willie yeah. ar- around it and the other point I would make is that um, you know Limerick played with a you know Tipperary played with a real system and we'll talk about it a little bit later on against Clare and Clare had to do something to try and break the momentum of it and, and, and so on and but we're, you know we said that at the start of the show here that there is going to be some big beatings in hurling once teams get momentum like that you're going to get a number of beatings and that in it um, so so I, 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 you know, the same could be happening in Watford. I don't know, um, but I, I just think that the Lewis commentary around it, without real sort of hard evidence or facts to back it up, and just saying that the players wanted somebody else. I can tell you, in every county that was going, the players wanted somebody else. Some players wanted somebody else, not all. Yeah. And look, that's just the nature of things. Um, so you don't have a problem with players sourcing a manager. Like it's not like they're interviewing him, but they, players might have connections or might know a lad in another college that knows this lad. It's all right for players to nominate a manager, absolutely. isn't it? Uh, and I think what's crucial is, and what didn't happen for a long number of years, was that the manager was sourced without any input whatsoever from the players. And I think the, you know the selection group that that's going to select a manager. Their first people to speak to is the team. And they need to sort of understand um, the needs of the team, where the team wants to go, their ambitions, the type of player that they want. Um, there, w- there wouldn't be much point in, for example, uh, getting a manager who favours a long game with a team that plays a possession game. You know, those type yeah. of, they're sort of fundamental things that yeah. I would expect everybody to know. Um, but equally, you need to be very, very careful that people aren't looking for favourite managers to suit their type of game and that as well. That's not individually driven in that. Um, and I suspect that won't be the case. And, and I'd, I'd, I'd say also... There's an old saying, be careful for, for what you look for. Um, because, look, I- if you look at year one in Galway with Michal and, and Franny and Noel, um, you'd probably say it was an average year. And t- year two, they went along one in All-Ireland. Very same thing happened in Limerick with John and and and, and, uh, and with the lads. Yeah, there. Limerick's a better example. Definitely but, but, Limerick's but, a, good, a good example. Good Galway example. were beaten in an All-Ireland semi-final. And you, could, and you could say, last, you could say look, look even more close. Um, you know, I've been disappointed with with the way Kevin Martin was treated. Um, you know, d- did the bounce happen with the new management team? Well, look, d- they didn't win the game, I suppose. So so I, I suppose it's just be careful for what you look for. Now, I will certainly say this and make this very, very clear. If things are broken in a dressing room, you need to get them fixed. Simple as that. Um, and I suppose this brings us back, Wooly, to another point. Is there a sort of a management process between county board the team and the county management team that regularly keeps the finger on the pulse. So the people who select the manager, are they held on board maybe for a monthly meeting with the team and the management just to tick-tack that everything's going okay and, you know, we're, we're, we're getting the best out of the team and so on, so on, so on. Um, I don't think it is. Um, and I, I don't know of any county that actually does that. I stand corrected on that. The, the, the real difficulty in that is that the people that manage the county team in terms of the of the executive at county board level level rarely have the expertise of knowing what's needed to manage county teams to then be able to have a management process in place to talk to players and to talk to management and that i think that's a little piece that's missing that i think would be helpful yeah no it definitely would it'll be interesting to see what happens the next day now whether fanning will wield the axe on players or whether he's going now fanning didn't cover himself in glory tactically against limerick you'd, ha- you'd have to say so like i mean it's just i i, know, I, I think i think i I do agree with that. I think the facts, I have no problem in, in uh, discussing the facts and the performance and that. And I think there's things that, you know, if you were back, you might do things differently. Um, but I, I'm just going back to that original point that, you know, when teams get momentum on you, particularly with some, you know, serious system ways. And you could say the same about uh, Jerry and Donald with Clare last Sunday. I think somebody was critical of bringing back an extra defender in the second half. Um, you know when they were playing with a wind and with, with a breeze and that um, but look I, I can say it's very very difficult when momentum goes against you and the other team um, probably gets a foothold on top of you and, and, and that it's very difficult to break that as we all know that this is not new to any yeah. of us it's difficult to, it's even more difficult now to do it and it's even more difficult in hurling because the scoring range is so far and it's you've got the legs of Noel McGrath scoring from his own half back line he can put three pints on the board and put you out of the game in, in a couple of minutes um, so it's a little bit more difficult to do that is the point I'm just trying to make here. Now, but I do want to go back to that point, Willie. Um, I, I don't want to be just seen to 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 back the status quo or anything like that. If things are broken, they need to get fixed, but not 
not getting fixed based on innuendo and and you know what people want to say and on 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 TV and radio and those type of things. You got to go and speak to the key people involved. Um, and if if things can get fixed and put back together, great. And if they're not broken, if they can't be put back together, well, then you've got to change things. Yeah, no, exactly. And in fairness to Eddie Brennan, or in fairness to any others, they might be hearing some things and you know hearing maybe information from relations or from it's very hard to hear from the actual camp but you can hear from people associated with camp things aren't going well in there and maybe you don't have you don't want to be leaving names or saying I was talking to such and such so you can only allude to it you know so like I mean I would be I, I wouldn't think lads or necessarily all of them would be throwing stuff out like that completely off top of their heads you might be you might be you might have a someone down in Waterford that you know well but you're not going to start naming names you know I, 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 I disagree with that Wally um, I, I think there's been way way too much of that um, I think even the, I think Don Logue made the point um, I think someone needs to go well, clearly that's only one person, and and um, you know I'm not going to defend parties. Well, they'll defend themselves. There, I'm not going to defend managers. They're well able to defend themselves. The reason they're managers is because they're hard-edged people. Um, but unless you have facts, those things are incendiary in the dressing room, and we know that. And you know, Don Logue was it was a coach with Clare, and and will be a manager of again of Cork or or whoever. Um, and you know saying those sort of things are are not helpful is all I'll say yeah. in a dressing room they're definitely more hard hitting the Sunday game lads like Jackie Terrell was calling Claire a bad junior beat or ja- bad junior team they're, they're definitely I don't know maybe they're being told to be a little bit more opinionated this year or something they're de- usually hurling uh, analysts aren't as as hard on, on teams as that yeah no I look I, I, I'm just making that point that that you know if you have a comment or a, or a particularly a hard opinion that may very well be um, you know, hurtful to a dressing room. You know, I think you should be able to back that up. And if you don't, you know the the, the uh, consequences of that of what you're saying, and you know the consequences now in terms of social media and all the other things as well. Um, so I, I think people need to be more responsible. I, I I'd qualify all of that in saying, um, you know, you don't want to be a sheep here either and not say things as they are. But unless you have facts to back that up, uh, be responsible about your comments. Yeah. Okay. Great stuff, Cheddar. We'll move on and we'll talk about Kilkenny and Galway next. Yeah.